Hi everyone, this is our look at indicators. Asset-based indicators can be found in a table on page 10 of the data booklet. We're not concerned with all parts of this table. There's information like the standard abbreviations and this thing called the acid equilibrium constant, Ka. We're not worried about any of that. We are concerned only with the names, the pH range, and the associated color changes involved. Many of the indicators we're going to be familiar with, like bromthymol blue, however, there's definitely going to be some that we've never heard of before, like methyl orange, methyl red, even something like bromocresol green. Okay, they're not in alphabetical order, they're listed by pH range. Okay, the way that the table works is, if the pH that we're testing is below the range, we get the first color. For example, the table says, Bromthymol blue has a pH range of 6.0 to 7.6, and the colors associated with that one are yellow to blue. So if the pH is below the range, we get the first color. So for bromthymol blue, there's the range. Anything below 6, so 5.9, 5.8, 5.7, 54321, anything below 6 would give us the first color yellow the pH is above the range, we get the second color. Here's the range higher than 7.6, so 7.7, 7.8, 7.9, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, we get the second color, blue. Below 6, yellow. Above 7.6, blue for bombthymol blue. Now, if the pH is in the range, we get a blending of the colors. If the pH is in this range, we get a mixture of yellow and blue, green. Now, it's important to say that closer to 6, we'd have a green that's more yellow. Closer to 7.6, we'd have a green that's more blue. But in the range, a blending of the colors. Here, on this table, the we only see things like yellow and red, blend together to make orange, or like bromthymol blue, yellow and blue, where the blending is going to make green. One more time, below the range, and all these indicators have a range, below the range, the first color that's listed. For bromthymol blue, below 6, yellow. Above the range, the second color, for bromthymol blue, above 7.6 blue, and in the range, a blending of colors. We're going to get questions in a few different varieties, but indicators alone, the style is sort of like this question here, where we would have multiple indicators listed, and we would do our best to determine the pH. So here we go. A solution with an unknown pH. We didn't know the pH. It was tested with multiple indicators. It's never just going to be one indicator. It's always going to be two or three parts of the question. Alizar and yellow turned yellow. Wow, never heard of alizar and yellow before. Methyl orange turned yellow. Methyl red turned red. Figure out what the pH is, determine the pH. We need to take our time. We need to rely heavily on the data booklet. Alizar and yellow turned yellow. I need to find alizar and yellow. Alizar and yellow has a range of 10.1 to 12. And it says yellow to red. If alizar and yellow turned yellow, that means the pH was below the range, below 10.1. So I'm going to really write everything down here. Alizar and yellow. By looking it up in the data booklet, it tells me that because it turned yellow, the pH was less than 10.1. The pH is less than 10.1. Now, if I really wanted to know the pH of this solution, that's why just doing one test is not sufficient. If we only used alizar and yellow, we would just know the pH is less than 10.1. But it could be 9, 8, 7, 3. We don't know. One test doesn't really narrow it down a whole bunch. So we look at the next test. Methyl orange turned yellow. We did a test with methyl orange. 
I've never even heard of methyl orange maybe before, so I have to find it on the table. Where is it? Make sure you look at the right place. Methyl orange. I found it here on the table. It has a range, 3.2 to 4.4, and it says red to yellow. If methyl orange turned yellow, that's the second color listed, so we must have something above the range. A test turning yellow here means that the pH is greater than 4.4. Now we're really starting to narrow it down. Before we started at all, we had no idea at all what the pH was. Then after our first test, we knew it was less than 10.1. But now it's less than 10.1 and bigger than 4.4. We're starting to narrow down the possibilities. And we have a third test. Methyl red turned red. So this was a test with methyl red. I need to find it on the table again. Don't look at the wrong spot. Ooh, methyl red. It has a range. It has some colors. It says 4.8 to 6, red to yellow. If methyl orange turned red, sorry, if methyl red, pardon me, turned red, that's the first color listed. It's below the range, so that means it's less than 4.8. The pH is less than 4.8. So, after using the data booklet, understanding the way that the table was set up to be used, we took this one indicator at a time, and we narrowed it down and narrowed it down and narrowed it down. Less than 10.1, but also bigger than 4.4, but now further refined, less than 4.8. In the end, the results of these tests are telling us that the pH, look at it, was bigger than 4.4, but less than 4.8. Bigger than 4.4 means 4.5. We have a range here, and less than 4.8. We didn't get a specific pH, we got a pretty tight range, 4.5 to 4.7. We really narrowed it down and narrowed it down, test by test, in order to express the answer as concisely as possible. Indicators are really important substances for us in chemistry. There's a table about them really close to the back of the data booklet on page 10. It's not that hard to use. There's some really specific things to keep track of. And when we're being asked to solve questions, there's going to be multiple things to think about all at once. We're just going to narrow the range, narrow the range, narrow the range, narrow the range, until we're able to express it as concisely as possible. And I hope that helps.